Good morning, dear students. Welcome to the science class. Today we continue our discussion on chapter 4, heat. The last class you learned about temperature is a measure of the degree of hotness of an object. A reliable measure of the hotness of an object is its temperature. Temperature is measured by a device called thermometer. You also learned about the working of clinical thermometer. The clinical thermometer is designed to measure the temperature of human body only. In today's class, you will learn about another type of thermometer, laboratory thermometer. How do we measure the temperature of other objects? For this purpose, there are other thermometers. One such thermometer is known as the laboratory thermometer. The range of a laboratory thermometer is generally from minus 10 degrees Celsius to 110 degrees Celsius. The range of laboratory thermometer is generally from minus 10 degrees Celsius to 110 degrees Celsius. Here you can see the diagram of laboratory thermometer. What are the precautions to be observed while reading a laboratory thermometer? Thermometer should be washed before and after use. Read the thermometer keeping the level of mercury along the line of sight. Handle the thermometer with care. If it hits against some hard object, it can break. Don't hold the thermometer by the bulb while reading it. Laboratory thermometer should be kept upright, not tilted. Bulb should be surrounded from all sides by the substances of which the temperature is to be measured. The bulb should not touch the surface of the container. So these are the precautions to be observed while reading a laboratory thermometer. Let us go for an activity. Take some hot water in a beaker or a mug. Dip the thermometer in water. Wait till the mercury thread becomes steady and note the temperature. Here you can see. Now take out the thermometer from water. Observe carefully what happens now. Do you notice that as soon as you take the thermometer out of water, the level of mercury begins to fall. This means that the temperature must be red while the thermometer is in water. So there is a lot of concern over the use of mercury in thermometers. Mercury is a toxic substance as you know and it is very difficult to dispose of it if a thermometer breaks. These days digital thermometers are available which do not use mercury. Here you can see a digital thermometer. Now another portion you are going to study is transfer of heat. You might have observed that a frying pan becomes hot when kept on flame. It is because the heat passes from the flame to the utensil. When the pan is removed from the fire, it slowly cools down. Why does it cool down? Or why does it cool down? The heat is transferred from the pan to the surroundings. So you can understand that in both cases, the heat flows from a hotter object to colder object. In fact, in all cases, heat flows from a hotter object to a colder object. How does heat flow? Hope you understood this example. A frying pan becomes hot when kept on a flame. It is because the heat passes from the flame to the utensil. So when the pan is removed from the fire, it slowly cools down. The heat is transferred from the hot pan to the surroundings. So the heat flows from a hotter object to the colder object. So how does the heat flow? Let us study. Take a rod or flat strip of a metal. Let us take aluminum or iron. Fix a few small wax pieces on the rod. Here you can see. These pieces should be at nearly equal distances. Clamp the rod to a stand. If you do not find a stand, you can put one end of the rod in between bricks. Here you can see. Now heat the other end of the rod and observe. What happens to the wax pieces? Do these pieces begin to fall? Which piece falls first? Do you think that heat is transferred from the end nearest to the flame to the other end? Of course, you can understand wax pieces begins to fall. Heat transfer from end close to the flame to the farthest end. 
the process by which heat is transferred from the hotter end to the colder end of an object is known as conduction so the process by which heat is transferred from the hotter end to the colder end of an object is known as conduction in solids generally the heat is transferred by the process of conduction the materials which allow heat to pass through them easily are conductors of heat so the materials which allow heat to pass through them are known as conductors of heat for example aluminium iron and copper the materials which do not allow heat to pass through them easily are poor conductors of heat such as plastics and wood poor conductors are known as insulators the water and air are the poor conductors of heat then how does the heat transfer takes place in these substances you have to understand two things what are conductors and what are insulators the materials which allow heat to pass through them are called conductors the material that do not allow the heat to pass through them are known as insulators of heat so another type of heat transfer is known as convection let us see that one take a round bottom flask fill it two thirds with water place it on a tripod or make some arrangement to place the flask in such a way that you can heat it by placing a candle below it here you can see a round bottom flask this is a tripod a wire goes wait till the water in the flask is still place a crystal of potassium permanganate at the bottom of the flask gently using a straw now heat the water by placing the candle just below the crystal when water is heated the water near the flame gets hot hot water rises up the cold water from the sides move down where down towards the source of heat this water also gets hot and rises and water from the sides moves down this process continues till the whole water gets heated so this mode of heat transfer is known as convection so the water near the flame gets hot first and hot water rises up so the cold water from the sides move down towards the moves down towards the source of heat this water also gets heated and rises and water from the sides again moves down this process continues till the whole water gets heated so this mode of heat transfer is known as convection so how does the heat travel in air in which direction does the smoke go the air near the heat source gets hot and rises the air from the sides comes into take its place in this way the air gets heated you can understand this one the air near the heat source gets hot and rises the air from the sides comes into take its place in this way the air gets heated let us see this activity light a candle keep one hand above the flame and one hand on the side of the flame do your hands feel equally hot if not which hand feels hotter of course you can understand the hand above the flame will be hot notice that the towards the top the air gets heated by convection therefore the hands above the flame feels hot on the sides however there is no convection and air does not feel as hot as at the top dear students this is all for today's class hope you all have understood it in next class you will learn about sea breeze and land breeze till then bye take care